with God, everything starts with being able to do or the will of the creator. Um, the laws, the laws are for the planet, for everybody here. The creator created the sun, the creator created the moon, so anything that's under the sun and moon, they get to enjoy it. So all things, all life, pretty much the sun and the moon tells you should be equal or share the sun equal and share the moon equal. So that's the beginning of understanding who the creator is. Everything under his sun is supposed to be shared equally. Those sun rays, it hit everybody. So with that premise is where your relationship starts with the creator. Now, if something's out of balance with that sun, the sun will let you know. It's either gonna be too much or too little. And your life is gonna reflect that. So this is the beginning of understanding who the creator is in the essence. Everything down here has to be in balance with what the creator is saying. He controls it for the plant life, summer, winter, fall, spring, things that, that can't move, he'll control it for them. So they don't need laws. They don't need scripts to balance themselves out by. We do. We the only species that he created with a will of his own. A tree can't do anything but what a tree can do. So that tree is in its divinity. Is that tree perfect? No. Some branches missing. There's some, there's some leaves that are brown on it. But it's still divine. It's still perfectly a tree. It's not trying to be anything else. Where the branch is missing from the tree, it's not trying to grow a cat out of it. You understand? So it's still in its divinity with the creator. Now, what most people don't understand, what most people don't understand is with God, there's been a couple different narratives. One, when he was dealing with individuals, and another narrative when he was dealing with groups. But it's been the same. It's been the same. The same laws, the same order. So it's not about religion as much as it's, it's about being in his divinity. We have rules and things to follow, so we stay in our divineness. And some of them would be like not worshiping any other gods. And if you read the narrative, if you, if you actually enter the scripts, he'll explain to you by his word what other gods are. Not by what we think other gods are, by what he tell us other gods are, right? So, this is the biggest part of dealing with a missing obedience to follow what his recipe book is to get familiar. Excuse me, y'all. Fucking ants. To get familiar with what his narrative is or to move in a direction that's divine or godly. Remember those trees? The trees don't need a narrative because they can't do anything but be trees. Are they perfect? No, but they're perfectly trees. They're still in their divine order. So even though you have days when you may do something out of the order of the Most High, that's not your everyday thing. You may hiccup, but you still live in a divine life. It's like missing a day at work. You still employ, but some days, you just can't make it to work, right? And um, God never said to be perfect. This is another uh, one of those things that that wasn't written under the order of our Creator, the Divinity. See, um, people like to say God, and God is like to the highest degree that we can conceive as people, but. The creator, the entity, the most high, that's something that you can't put in a capsule. So once you understand that and expound upon that and get get the magnitude of what the creator is, if you could just look at everything around you and understand that it's a great 
power that created all these things. And for that great power, it has order. Y'all like to say the universe. You like to say things like that because it makes you feel more comfortable. It's less scary than understanding this a real living entity that has a divine order that all this creation is supposed to follow. You don't get that. You like to talk about vibrations and frequencies. It's the same thing, but the rebellion in you against your creator won't let you give him his full due. So you put it in a box or something like God so you can question the thing God, but that don't mean anything. I'm God, you're God when you're acting in your divinity the entity will manifest itself in you and everything around you will be heaven it's not a place you go to when you leave here what people don't understand is nothing is nothing right you're thinking about the great beyond and when you sleep at night you don't know anything if you don't remember a dream it's a period that you can't remember it's just nothing i know i do it every night you know, it's nothing that I experience. Your death is going to be just like that. That's what I can promise you. I don't know much after that, but you don't know the difference between a minute and an hour. You just know nothing. So it's people that's dead now. They going to wake up if they wake up, and it's going to be just like it was a minute. You have to understand that about your own sleep. So we put too much focus on what's going to happen after. And our creator, the entity, gave us this recipe book to manifest heaven right now as above so below see that book isn't 100 percent on the mark it can't be because we pinned it as men we were supposed to only bow to the creator it's in the narrative of the book you can find it in samuel but you're not intimate with the most high what you intimate with is religion and it was never about religion it was always about being in our divine order with the most high but we've been tricked along the way we've been told that there's no more laws you've been given this greek mythology this figure of jesus this trinity when if you read the actual scriptures the narrative says it's me it's none before it's none after i am it i am the power of the greek we call them god and and now and now finite Minds that we had to put him in something we we can't even encapsulate what he is that's why it's i am we can't get it we can't pronounce the name of what he is y'all don't understand this part because you keep trying to bring god down to earth that's not gonna work you have to elevate up to the heavens but everybody need religion you need scholarship you need this membership when these trees down here not a member of anything you have a a whole garden full of oak trees and don't none of them have anything to do with each other but together they create a force and a whole ecosystem and that's what we supposed to be those that's going to choose the most high we're going to choose the most high power and act in that divinity he left a recipe book here for us to do that but forces keep pulling you away from that that's the source of your power that's the source of your divinity you're running around here trying to capture material all this material is yours already. You don't have to chase it. All you have to do is be in your divine order. It'll come to you. It makes sense when you read the scriptures when he said he feed the birds of the field. They don't have any hands, nothing. They don't work, nothing. No markets, no anything. But everything that's in their divine order, it's out there for them to eat. Whatever their diet is, any species on the planet, the most high makes sure that species has. Even rats. We got garbage, man. He feed rats. Snakes. He feeds snakes rats. It's an ecosystem. It's planned for, man. We the ones out of our divinity. Listen, let me tell you something. If you desire to have any more than any of his creations on this planet, you're not in your divine order. All I want is what the Most High has for me. You know, I could not like you. I can't hate you because the Most High, our divine order is not to hate. And don't get it messed up. Just because I don't hate you don't mean I won't kill you. You know, we have rules against murder, not against killing. We actually have orders that we supposed to get rid of certain stuff, but we not in our divine order. We think we know better, and then we leak. We won't kill a zombie, right? 
because the zombie's familiar, so it's so hard for you to pull the trigger on a zombie, then you get bit. Watch these movies. The Most High give you, like, little bits and pieces through their own fuckery. He tried to teach us, but if you ain't in divine order, you're not going to receive. And the first thing, the very first thing that our people need to get rid of is this Jesus Christ. Do y'all even know the origin of Christ? Do you know the origin of Christianity? Be honest, have you read enough of the scriptures to even validate Jesus Christ? You have to ask yourself some honest questions about this if you want to move on. If you just want to be a member and go to church every Sunday, then that's fine. Continue in the charade. But the Christ that you talk about, this Jesus, has absolutely nothing to do about God in the Tanaka Torah. Um, black people. Y'all see these uh, people that you call Jews. Uh, most of them are white that you see in America or look like white people. They don't follow Jesus. Do y'all ever guess why y'all think they the cult or something wrong with them because you was brought up on Christianity? Have you ever looked into it? Or you just got in line with the Jesus thing? If you follow God for real, don't you think it's your job to start researching on your own and just because the pastor says something doesn't have to be the truth. Y'all know what's up with some of these pastors, right? So don't you think you owe it to yourself to start researching? If Jesus is true, if, if it's real, you'll find out about it. And I could just be a liar, but you won't even look into it because you're that afraid. And you shouldn't be afraid to look into it. Or if you don't want to look into it, get in contact with me. I can help you. But... I grew up just like everybody else on the Jesus juice. And then when I got old enough to research and started at the beginning of the Bible, the scriptures, were well, actually with the law, statutes, and commandments. Because no matter how many stories are in the scriptures, if I don't know what the narrative of the creator is or what his will is for me, none of those stories are gonna make any sense to me at all. And a lot of them are just in there to lead you on certain certain journeys to see if you're really paying attention to what the Most High is saying. He actually says that in the scriptures, that he's going to seduce you. He's going to send stuff your way to test you. What I tell everybody is the way to the Most High is to not want any more than your brothers and your sisters. Um, don't even be concerned with what anybody else has materially or look at anybody with their value being based on what they own, what they have or what they can potentially have. When you get to that point, your vision is wide open. You can see exactly what the Most High is saying. Um, most people lie. Most people seem like they wish you well, but they don't. And you don't even have to wish a person well. Just don't wish them ill will or be jealous or contentious about things that they have. Because it's not going to stop your blessings from coming from the Most High. And this is the biggest problem with us and our people. The contingency. What's in people's heart. And I don't like a lot of people. Don't at all. But I don't begrudge them having anything. You know, when you think about it, like, that is hateful. And it's another group of people on the planet. Just because they don't want you to have you know, these other people, we talking about reparations right now, right? And it's a bunch of people that's against reparations that won't change that annual income because another group of people will get something that they perceive or put them up socially. So now they'll see these group of people as equal or above them. So that's the only reason they don't want these people to have reparations. Too scared of their place in society. These are ungodly people. And these people run your society. And these are the same people that brought you Christianity. Under the sword. I can give you actual documents and names. Um, Pope Nicholas V signed the documents of discovery. The dumb Diverse papers. The Portuguese and the Spains. I meant the Spaniards. That let them cut loose in, in the North Atlantic Hemisphere. And anything that wasn't their Christianity or white, they got to enslave. 
Now, this is what a lot of people don't know, that, um, that all at one time, all dark-skinned people were what you would call Muslim, a Muslim. And if you would have read the Bible, it's a couple things you would understand, that um, they weren't always Hebrews. You know, Noah wasn't a Hebrew. Adam wasn't a Hebrew. Job wasn't a Hebrew. The actual start of the Hebrew nation, Abraham, wasn't a Hebrew by the narrative of the Bible. Abraham was a Chaldean, right? And the term Hebrew, uh, for as best people can translate, means to cross over from the other side. So Abraham was the beginner of the Hebrew faith. Um, which people would say Christianity stems from, right? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, Abraham's first son wasn't Jacob. Abraham's first son was Ishmael. Ishmael got the same law, statutes, and commandments that Jacob got. Ishmael was the oldest son. Ishmael is the progenitor of Muhammad. Islam, therefore, we were Muslim before we were Christians. The Christianity came under the sword. The Christianity is a pagan version of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. No Jesus was involved. The whole deal with us and God was to always walk in his divine order. And when we got out of that, repent and turn back to God. This is the narrative throughout the Old Testament. Not to be perfect. Check King Solomon, he built the temple, the very first temple, which y'all would consider church, but they never went to church either. Another Christian narrative. They didn't have to go to church because their daily lifestyle worshiped the Elohim. The way we walk was in our divinity every day. Um, trees, not just trees on Sunday. You understand? They're divine every day. So my life had to reflect the most high every day. Uh, the Sabbath day was a day of relaxation. We were chilling because the rest of our life, our work, Ecclesiastics 12 and 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Lord and keep his commandments is the whole duty of man every day. The Sabbath is a day of rest and relaxation. You got people saying you can't shop, you can't cook, all this nonsense. It's just a day of rest and relaxation. This is how Carrites view the book. We don't add, we don't subtract. And somehow along the way, it became membership to man for you to bow down and worship a man, right? That's a direct violation of what the Most High put down. Exodus 20 and 3 on down lets you know what's required of us per the Most High. And then it's a bunch of not a bunch of other things, but it's a, it's a bunch of structure to the nation that's going to live under these orders. So the Most High is saying, all that's going to follow me, this is how we get down. No more, no less. And if you're not following that, that's chill. But don't associate yourself with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Ishmael. For my Muslim brothers, Islam, you brothers, um, you closer than Christians, but you're wrong too. Y'all don't get the essence. You want to put a Muhammad or anybody. There's no man that's walking around on the planet that's closer to the Most High than you are. Same with me. It just depends on how open you are to receive His will. Your power with the Most High is determined on your obedience with the Most High. And our arrogance is, is our weakness as well because People will look at me and be like, Yo, who are you to stand here and give the message of the Most High? And they'll be like, who am I not to give the message? You know, y'all still looking for this kingly robe, this royal presence. They've been looking for this forever. If you read the book, they've always been looking for somebody to come that's going to be mighty, surfing on clouds. Y'all know the narrative of the Most High? Have you not read the book? He always tell you it's going to be one of your own people. Just going to be speaking his word. Y'all like to say prophet? I don't like that word. Because it ain't for prophet. 
You know, it's for benefit. This is for the benefit of the people, the benefit of the nation. That's the only reason we had this structure. It's not for your personal gain. Read the scriptures. From the beginning, we were supposed to make the Most High our king. But we wanted a king like other nations. And then the Most High ran it down to you what a king would do. Take this, who take that. He's going to take your kids, your resources. This your government. All we needed was the Most High. Even the best kings ever, Hezekiah, David, they still failed us. And they were righteous men, right? We, we've been fighting the Most High's order, trying to figure out the Most High, trying to make everything about knowledge, everything about scholarship, battling back and forth, having a test on what the Most High is, calling him everything but what he is. Of course we lost. You look into material to validate your worth. When we were supposed to be one nation, all sharing in the same wealth and abundance. But as soon as somebody's eyes think that they should have more than another person, that set the balance off. Now people trying to recover have been chasing that balance since. And society don't want balance. You could look right at it. Look at the situation that that blacks are in today. And I'm using the word black because that's what you identify with. Now, why would a group of people want to be in charge of a group of people like that? I can't see myself, if, even if I didn't like a whole gang of these people, I wouldn't want to control them, subjugate them. I wouldn't do to another group of people what's getting done to blacks. Stepping outside of that, no emotions, just looking at it as a human being. And then, flip side is black people. How do y'all just sit still and let it happen? If you really believed in a God and believed that you was free as you claim you are, how do you sit still and just let it happen? I mean, in the 60s, they went to war. They were outside getting killed, shot, man. I recently came across the Panthers, the Black Panthers documentary, the vanguard of the movement, and they were children, man. 17 through like 25, out there in the streets, exchanging bullets with the police. They were going to war with these fuckers, man, and they didn't have the knowledge that we have right now. You know, I think a couple of the brothers knew the law and they actually changed some gun laws because of the Black Panthers were carrying their guns openly on these streets in the 60s. So that the police couldn't kill the people, man. We out here killing the people. That's what the Panthers started as, to protect us from the police. Imagine if we had those kind of balls today. And then we pretend like we honor them. We, we shouldn't even be saying anything about them. It's sad, too. It's because people talk, but they talking from an individual perspective. We talking about Juneteenth now, right? That's where we are. I'm like, it's disrespectful for us to be like Juneteenth, for us to come up with that on our own. This land is our land through God, you know, like anywhere you set your foot as a human being, the most high God created it. So you home already, you know, so they have a 4th of July that's recognized nationally that took place on this soil about what? And they celebrate their independence, their freedom. <laughs> And then they have the gall to not put it on there, on the books federally. A, a national holiday, the day that slaves were freed. You know who you're dealing with, right? They good with the situation. These people are telling you right in your face. We not gonna change anything, we don't have to change. But we don't do shit. We still participate in all this stuff. We participate in the holidays, all of them.
they separated us from our source. So we don't have our power. We don't have our divinity. It wouldn't even be a big fight if you walked in who you were supposed to be. They can't fight against you. They can't stop a hurricane. They can't stop a tree. They can't stop a desert. They can't stop an ocean. So when we walk in our divinity, nothing can stop you, but you keep leaving a door open when you say it's no harm in this day or that day. The very first thing that the Most High did when the narrative changed from Adam to Noah to Job to individual people and families, when, it ch when the narrative changed to a group of people, he gave a decree. He gave Moses a decree for us to do and what not to do. And he said, don't be like these other nations. They're gonna be operating in a whole bunch of different pagan ways, worshiping other gods, eating crazy ways, certain sexual habits. Don't do these things. Deuteronomy 30, 31. If you follow the scripts, maybe six weeks before Moses' death, he was giving Moses these orders to give to us. It was before we was in so-called Israel or the land. Still, we was out in the wilderness about to cross over the Jordan. He was telling Moses, look, son, you ain't going in there because Moses didn't follow orders. Howl at me off here, and I'll fill you in on what that was, but he was saying, you're about to rest with your fathers. You're not going into these lands. Joshua gonna go in these lands with these people, but I need you to give these people these rules before they go over here with these foreign nations. I don't want them doing what they doing. None of that stuff, from the homosexuality to the medicine that they using, even the Christmas that you celebrate, Jeremiah 10 and 2, down to about 5, read it. Speaking out against the Christmas that you celebrate this Christ on. And this is the sad part. You'll read it, and you'll still celebrate it. And then claim my God, the creator of the Tanakh and Torah. It's not the same. If you tweak any of it, it's not the same. And people saying that the law is done away with, that's a lie. The law, the essence of the creator, his divinity can never be done away with. Now, the culture, the people, and the civilizations may have changed at the time, making some of the order. And that's all these laws were for us for order. They didn't want you to have an ox hooked up with a goat. You be in the field all day, spinning around in a circle. So we had order for our nations. All of these orders wasn't something that was spiritual, something that was going to condemn you to death. These orders, these were just for, I don't want to say balance, a continuity, but to keep everything moving smoothly in our nation so we wouldn't be like other nations. They had order for things like periods for the women, you know, like order for no woman being without a husband. This is where some of the polygamy comes in. It's not about just getting ass, it was about order. If, if a man died, his brother had to take that wife in and take care of her, so forth and so on. If you had an extra wife, you couldn't, you couldn't spend more money on one than the other. It was odd. It wasn't just some fly-by-night shit like we have today. Some things you couldn't be, and that's just what it is. We had order. If you wanted to be a homosexual, if they caught you, they was going to kill you. That was what it was. If you were a murderer, if they caught you, they was going to kill you. That's just what it was. Now, you had a choice to be a part of this society, which is Israel, or to not be a part of it. The same holds true today. Israel is not a physical place. It's Israelis living in that land right now. Israeli is by locale. Israelite was the people that had the land, the heritage, the people that take the order, the covenant with God. That's who Israel is. Israel is to struggle with God and to overcome even the name, to wrestle with God and to overcome is Israel. That's what we've been doing our whole life, wrestling with God, but we haven't overcome yet. And there's been some things in your way. Like I said, this Christianity, that's your enemy, these pagan Romans and Greeks, which they're notorious for, 
taking different parts of different myths, combining them into one thing. They didn't even want to deal with Jesus. Sunday, the actual day of worship, is the day that they worship the sun. Moon day is moon day, Monday. They worship the moon. All of this is pagan. Christmas is pagan. Uh, Amos 5 and 21, from the narrative of the scripts, God is saying he doesn't honor your assembly days, your feast days of man. He don't honor those. So when do we start celebrating that way? Was it before or after the Christianity? Guys really need to consider that Christianity. It's almost like we're afraid to look at Jesus and when we separate Jesus from God, people people think there's no God or, or you're an atheist. No, you need to start with the Tanakh, the Torah. Look at the instructions, the narrative of God. See what it's always been. It's never been about one man. It's always been about God's people on a whole. And if you want more for yourself than anybody else, you're not godly. You know, as much as I want, I want the next person to have because I know who God is. I know by that person having as much as they can have, he can't stop me from having anything. When I'm walking in my divinity, everything that's for me, I'm going to have, and it'll be in abundance. And no matter what the next person has, be it a Range Rover, a Bentley, maybe all I'm driving is uh, a Chevy Chevette, a fucking uh, Volkswagen Beetle from like the 80s or something. If in my heart I'm happy and everything around me makes me move in that way, you won't know the difference. And that's where I am today. Um, Income-wise, I don't even have an income that you can trace, right? But I have more. I enjoy life more. I enjoy the people that I do have in my life more. I don't have a lot of people in my life. And the quality changed. I used to have a lot of people around and the friction was different. People smile and people pretend and you can feel that shit. So now when I'm walking in my divinity, people that's not like me can't even be around me and it's a good feeling. And I know a lot of people think I'm crazy or maybe they thought I was crazy and that's fine because I see how y'all living. I know how I was living. I know the lies I told. I know the bluffs, all the feel good shit that you do to make yourself feel a little better than you actually feel. And I'm glad I don't have to live in that shit no more. You know what I'm saying? And just keeping this divine order, I don't even have to say shit to phony people. They do it to themselves because they're not ready to be real. Everybody talking shit about <laughs> exposing people, you was this, you was that. Yeah, we all was something. You know, the difference is how long are you that? Or do you stay there making excuses for you accept that shit? Yeah, that's where it was, and I need to be better than that. You let people jail you into what you was or who you was. That's because your heart ain't good. Once you step outside the BS, that's the power. Once you real with yourself, that's it. Once you blow the whistle on yourself, it's a lot different. So a lot of y'all should challenge yourselves with this going to church shit, with this Jesus shit. You should get into the scriptures and see what you find in there. See if you find a Jesus connection to God. See if you see anything in the beginning of these scriptures where God is connecting himself to a Jesus. Or do you just see some new book pop up and attach itself? to a book that clearly say, do not add and do not subtract. Where's this New Testament come from? Don't lie to yourself, because that's the curse of the black people. 